every person TIG welding runs into problems. But a lot of the time, the problems are not caused by what you think. Gear, gas, contamination? Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had this happen to you before. You put your gear and everything all together, all good. You turn your machine and your gas on and then spark up for your first weld. And it looks like this. It looks like one giant dirty fart cloud happening in your welding pool. Most people stop welding. They take a look at their gear and everything looks good to go. What's the problem? This happens to myself once in a while for sure. For some reason, whatever small variable changes with my setup and all of a sudden there's this gross problem that I have to deal with. I classify this type of problem as one of three categories. It's either going to be gear, gas, or contamination. Now taking a look at this problem here, you can see that this is literal clouds of something happening in your actual welding puddle. Typically when you see something forming in the actual welding puddle itself or welding pool, this is going to be a gas related problem. This typically means that gas is becoming insufficient with its delivery. And this means that the welding puddle or the welding pool itself is not being shielded properly. Elements from the air that we breathe in our atmosphere are getting into the shield. And we can see this can result in actual patches of contamination in the actual welding area. Now I know some of you might be thinking that this could be possible uh, contamination happening with the plate or filler material. But typically with the experience that I've had dealing with problems, troubleshooting this stuff, you're gonna see contamination from the material happening either in the entire welding area or more focused around the cleaning action area of the weld when you're done. Look at the cleaning action of this weld here. There's contamination all down the edge of it. This indicates that the plate might have been contaminated and the cleaning action has cleared this away from the welding area. From my experience of welding over the decades that I've done it, if you're dealing with the kind of contamination like that, that usually indicates contamination on your plate or your filler material. Now, when you start to see this happening with the actual welding puddle and the welding puddle area alone, this indicates that you have a gas delivery problem. Now, there's a way that we can decipher this even further to make sure that we are on the right track. Grab a piece of scrap material that you know is good to go as far as good, clean material. This might be a piece of material that you may have arced up uh, to test out welding related problems before. Look at this here. I call this an ashtray. This is just a collection of different startup passes where I'm either testing out a new addition to my setup or troubleshooting a problem. I know for a fact from welding on this that this material has no contamination or no problems with it. So if I fire up on this thing and I see the same problems occurring that I was seeing on my actual welding project, then we know that contamination with the base material is not a factor. That's an easy way that you can rule this out completely. You're going see a lot of the things that I'm about to recommend with our troubleshooting here are going to take the same line of thinking as far as eliminating and clearing things off the table. Now, on the event that you fire up on your ashtray and everything looks the same, then indeed you have a gas problem. If you fire up on your ashtray and everything that was running terrible all of a sudden runs great, then you know you have a contamination problem. Simple, right? Here we go. Remember I said the word baseline. What we need to do now is eliminate all the different possibilities that could be contributing to a gas delivery problem. First things first, check your gas supply with your bottle. Obviously make sure that the valve is open fully all the way and also check your regulator flow. Make sure that the working pressure on your gauge reads all good and use one of these little turkeys right here. This is a flow meter. They are like $12 each. Go buy a few of them. You'll use them all the time. Here's what you're going to do with it. You're going to set your machine to a purge setting, and then you're going to use the flow meter to measure your actual gas delivery at the torch. Now, a lot of the time, a lot of people, even who are watching right now, yes, you, you will see that the gas registered at the torch will read differently than it does at the working pressure gauge on your regulator. Now, if there's ever a discrepancy between these two sources, you always want to make sure that you go with the reading on the torch end. This is the important end. Make any necessary adjustments so that the reading on your torch end reads what you want. Now doing this also doubles as doing a gas purge on your system. Doing a gas purge is gonna to help to push any air pockets out of your system. You see this footage here? These are air pockets caught in a gas line being pushed out. This sucks when this happens. This is very common after switching to a new bottle, removing a regulator, then reattaching it. But purging your system, as well as making sure you take a proper and accurate reading, but doing a proper gas purge, as well as taking an accurate reading at your torch end, this is how you're gonna ensure that everything is good to go with flushing anything out of your system and making sure you have an accurate reading. Okay, good. Now, if this fixes the problem that you are experiencing, good. Again, test it out on your ashtray. But if not, it's all good. We have now ruled out that the gas delivery system, as far as the bottle end and the reading that we need to see at the torch is good to go. Like I said, we're just crossing off possibilities off the list, troubleshooting. Let's keep her going, bud. The next thing we're gonna do is 
return to the torch. You have fancy gas lenses or cups. Screens that you put into stuff, get rid of them all. Take apart your torch completely and inspect everything. Make sure that your fittings were done up tightly and make sure that you check the inner collet sleeve on the inside of your torch. A lot of the time these little fellas can become deformed or twisted up under the heat. If it looks good, that's great. We can cross that off the list. If you see that little fella looking a little bit mangled, replace it immediately and try again. Now, if you're using a gas lens, you want to pick out a brand new gas lens screen and then you're just going to use it with a normal alumina cup. Nothing fancy. Or if you prefer a diffuser, switch to a brand new diffuser user setup and you want to make sure that these are 100% brand new good to go. You want to attach your alumina cup that you prefer as normal. Make sure everything is done up tight with the proper adapter on the torch as well. And then here is what I want you to do. Switch to a brand new tungsten. Do not mess around with this. Switch to a brand new one. No exceptions. And then what you're going to do when you install it into your torch is install it with almost no stick out at all. You want it to be almost flush with the end of your cup. I'm going to tell you why in a second here. Again, ensure that your gas is on. You You've purged, everything is all good. And then go ahead and do a test run with a dry arc, no filler. Get in as close as you can with your standoff distance. What we are doing at this point is eliminating any variables in the torch end of things. Being in close with minimal stick out like this with a good tried and tested setup will deliver good gas to your welding area. This is gonna be the most surefire way that we can ensure we are delivering proper gas shielding to our welding area without any funny business in the way. Sometimes when you add in extra screens, extra big cups and all this other stuff. Sometimes it may work well for some joints and for other joints it just won't. Again, we're bringing everything back to baseline with absolute simplicity to find what's causing our problem. We're troubleshooting. Now, doing what we just did here from 95% of the time in my experience is going to take care of the problem. This can show you that you might have had a problem with a clogged gas screen. I've seen this many times. A cup that isn't a good match for the new joint that you just tried to do or something. Lots of different options. Now, if this solves your problem, awesome. You don't have to go any further with the troubleshooting we're going to do here. However, keep this in mind. As you work your way back to the torch setup that you were trying to use, introduce things slowly and one step at a time. For example, just increase your stick out to what you would normally prefer with the setup that we just troubleshot everything with. Troubleshot, troubleshooted, troubleshooted. Don't put your fancy stuff on yet. Try this out first. If it works good with your normal stick out, everything looks clean as a whistle, then introduce the next variable like your fancy cup. Again, do a test pass, make sure everything looks good. And then you can introduce an extra gas screen that you want to use. You get the idea. This is going to help you reverse engineer in case you all of a sudden discover something that might have been a problem. Throwing things back together one step at a time slowly and checking each step as you do so. Again, like we said, where you're troubleshooting each variable. Now, if you have not solved your problem, don't freak out, it's all good. The next thing that I would do is follow your torch lead all the way back to your machine. Make sure nobody has a chair leg positioned on it or somebody standing on it. Believe me, this happens. Make sure that there are no kinks in the line. Everything runs straight and smooth back to the machine. Now, the next thing that I would do if the problem still continues is we're gonna check the bottle end again. I would do a leak test to make sure all of your fittings and everything on your bottle side of the machine work good. You're gonna work from the bottle at the regulator all the way to the machine. Now, looking at this diagram here, check it out. We can see the different zones that we have now completely and thoroughly troubleshot everything to check for any problems. Again, I said troubleshot, is that right? What we have done is work everything down to baseline. We have taken all the extra or unnecessary variables off the table. And we are troubleshooting our way down to the least common problems that somebody might have to deal with. For example, one time when I was getting going with welding, I was still very unfamiliar with the process. I was welding on some stuff where I knew everything was running fine before I ran out of gas. But after I changed the bottle to a new one, it was just running like crap. I leak tested my regulator, checked the stuff in my torch, still had the problem. I finally asked our welding supervisor to come over and help me take a look. And this is what he found here. My dumbass had parked the new cylinder right on the gas line. You can imagine how embarrassed I was. Sometimes it can seriously just be something as stupid as this. But you can see how checking your lines all the way back to the machine as well as checking your gas line on the other end of the machine can help you to make sure you don't do anything dumb like this and then go ask for help and look like a stupid idiot. Now, at this point, we can go into the... 
Woo boy. At this point, we can go even more into the weeds with troubleshooting. Nothing that we have done here has fixed the problem so far. The next thing that I would do is typically switch out my torch lead completely to a brand new torch lead. And again, as far as your torch setup goes, completely baseline your setup. Now, if you want to get even crazier, you can uh, switch out and try a brand new regulator and a brand new gas line. And again, leak test everything. This way we can totally ensure that we are not losing any gas in our system anywhere. This has helped me to deal with a ton of trouble. Unfortunately, if these last few options doesn't solve the problem for you, it leaves you with a couple things that might be uh, going on. Either you are working with a bad bottle of gas, which is sometimes very common if you have just swapped over to a new one, or you might unfortunately have an issue with the inside of your machine. Now that last option is extremely rare and from over 20 years of TIG welding in the industry, I have never actually had that problem, but I do know that that is something that has happened to some people. But those are some things that you can do to go a little further into the weeds with the troubleshooting to find out what the hell is going on. Like I talked about, simplify and baseline your setup. You're gonna be doing dry passes on your ashtray to make sure that your filler material isn't the problem either. And this next thing that I do, it might seem like a little much for some people, but I I personally go get my cylinder refilled when my level of my cylinder pressure falls below a thousand PSI. I find that when you get below a thousand PSI, the pressure kind of gets a little bit weird sometimes. I always want to make sure I have adequate pressure in my cylinder, even though it may not read as empty, I will do this. And yes, I pay for my own argon. But the way we've just talked about some troubleshooting is a way that we can really break down a lot of the stuff with your gas system. There's not a lot of videos on the internet that will break down troubleshooting for you guys. There's not a lot of videos that I I've seen out there and I definitely didn't learn any of this stuff in school for the most part. And actually uh, there's an entire chapter in my new hardcover textbook here that goes over troubleshooting much more in detail. Not only does this book give you a complete program and guide to TIG welding aluminum, but there's also a whole section of troubleshooting and different problems you're gonna encounter when you start to learn this stuff. Not only did I wanna write and give you the best textbook that I wish I had in welding school, but I also wanted to give you the classroom and the instructor as well. When you get the book, you just scan the QR code on the bookmark and you get access to a complete online curriculum of video lessons that follows the book page by page, chapter by chapter. You also get access to a private group where we all hang out and chat with each other. You can ask questions, you can say what's up, share what you're working on. Be sure to grab one of these books while they are available. Now, another thing I'm gonna talk about briefly here is the foot pedal for your machine if you're using one. Now, this little fella here is pretty simple, admittedly. It's pretty much just an on or off switch that's under your foot. It's not gonna to contribute to any gas-related problems or anything like that for the most part. Typically, when you start to see the problems with the foot pedal starting to crap out, you're either gonna get like no adjustment as you fluctuate on the actual pedal, or other times you're gonna see the arc cutting out and dying immediately it's really weird it can flicker on and off sometimes this can sometimes be problems with the inside of your foot pedal as far as what's reading the actual on or off or like however much throw you're using on the pedal or it can be a problem with your cord these things crap out all the time when I see somebody picking up a foot pedal like this here I used to absolutely stop them in their tracks and tell them to pick it up by the actual pedal like this. When you pick it up by the cord, you're gonna be pulling on the wiring harness inside. It's gonna eventually start to pull things loose. I used to always say, oh, you never pick a puppy dog up by the tail. Pick a puppy dog up like you love it. Now again, when it comes to problems with this stuff, with a possible foot pedal problem, Again, the easiest way to troubleshoot and see if this is the culprit is to switch it out for another one. Now I know that not everybody keeps uh, spare torch leads, spare ground leads, um, foot pedals and stuff laying around the shop, but if you can have a spare or you borrow someone else's, this is gonna help you to uh, troubleshoot and eliminate these things that we've talked about right away. And obviously having a spare one on hand is great because if something goes to hell, you can just switch it out and keep going with your project. Now the last thing that we'll cover here on our gear end of the problems is your ground lead. Now, I'm gonna do a hot take with this one, hear me out. A ground lead either works or it doesn't. A lot of people say, that, oh, a spring might be broken, my ground clamp or something like that. Honestly, from my experience and what I've seen with ground leads, if it's hooked up to the proper terminal on your machine and hooked up securely and then grounded to your workpiece on an area that has no paint or anything like that, it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. It has never really uh, 
given me any problems as far as my arc or welding stability or quality. Again, this is a personal take, but hear this out. There was one time that somebody was trying to debate with me this fact, and what we actually did is completely detach the clamp from the end of the ground lead, and with a rusty old C-clamp like this one here, I clamped the raw copper wires or whatever it is to the actual piece that we were welding, we flashed up and it welded absolutely fine. Like I said, this might be a personal hot take here, but with my experience with a ground lead, it either works or it doesn't work. Again, pick up one of these textbooks before this first run is sold out. They're almost gone. I've got free lessons that you can take on my website and you can download free PDF textbooks. Head to my website, check that stuff out, fill your boots, get learning and get welding. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. I am Dusty James, Phil and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.